There are two competing visions of America right now. One is of America as a Christian nation. This idea is held by some people who have political power right now, such as very conservative Christian politicians, including Michelle Bachman, who is thinking of running for president. And the other idea is of America as a secular nation. And this is the idea that our founding fathers had of our country when they founded it. And it's important not to confuse the idea of a secular nation with the idea of an atheist nation. An atheist government would be one in which the government is enforcing atheism, it's persecuting people for not being atheists, and it's indoctrinating people into atheism, much along the same lines as the Soviet Union was doing at one time. And that is entirely not what a secular nation is about. A secular nation is about preserving freedom of religion, and it does this through a strict separation of church and state. Now, the first way it does this is through protecting human rights. It protects such basic human rights as freedom of speech, freedom of congregation, freedom of the press, freedom of thought, and of course, freedom of religion. It allows you to be any religion you would like to be. Also, as much as possible, a secular state stays out of religion. It's only when people, religious people are violating human rights that the government will step in and stop them. For example, the United States government uh, recently went after Warren Jeffs. He was arrested, he was tried, and he was sentenced to life in prison. And what they got him on was having sex with under, underage girls, which he was marrying as part of his cult. It was a polygamous cult and he was marrying many girls and women and they got some to testify against him. And it was right for the government to go after him because he was abusing his power as a religious leader. He was using his position as a religious leader to violate human rights. And that is just not acceptable, whether it's for religious reasons or for other reasons. And the government has a responsibility to step in and stop people like Warren Jeffs from abusing the power that religion gives to them. But as long as religions are not violating human rights and are not abusing any power that people invest in them, then it's the role of, go of a secular government to step back and leave them alone. For example, we may have Muslims in the United States, and as long as they are secular Muslims who recognize human rights and who do not try to enforce Sharia law on anyone, that's fine. The government should step back and leave them alone and let them practice their religion as long as it's a personal religion and not one that they're trying to impose on others through force. Theocracy is bad for everyone. I'll argue that it's even bad for the people in power because it's bad for them morally and spiritually. But I'll focus here on how it's bad for everyone else. In a theocracy, people may be persecuted for heresy, for non-belief, or for apostasy. Heretics are people who have more or less the orthodox religion, but they disagree with it on some details. They believe something slightly different from what is orthodox. And consider this, in the United States, although most of the people in the United States are Christians, there is a wide variety of different Christian denominations in the United States. We have Roman Catholics, Eastern Orthodox, Mormons, Quakers, Episcopalians, Methodists, Lutherans, Presbyterians, Southern Baptists, American Baptists, Independent Baptists, Pentecostals, Congregationalists, Unitarians, and many more. So even if some particular Christian denomination does come to power in the United States, that denomination would not be representing all the Christians in America. Most of the Christians in America would still find themselves in a government that is being run by a denomination that is not there. So that is being run by a religion they do not agree with. So whichever denomination would come to power, it is in the interest of just about all Christians in America to prevent any Christian denomination from coming into power and controlling the government and trying to enforce its version of Christianity onto everyone else because that would be 
violating the rights not just of non-Christians, but of most of the Christians in America. Also, in a theocracy, religion ceases to be about your relationship with God, and it becomes about your relationship to the state. This leads to the corruption of religion. Even in a, if a theocracy starts with a true religion, it will devolve into an abomination. Consider how the Catholic Church behaved during most of its history. It led crusades against unbelievers and an inquisition against heretics. It stifled progress and kept Europe in the Dark Ages for centuries. Also, the Church of England wasn't much better than the Catholic Church. Although it didn't have an inquisition, many people from in England fled England to America in order to practice their own version of Christianity. We have the pilgrims and others who fled to England to America. And even in America, they were persecuting others who didn't agree with them. And finally, when the United States was formed, the founders of the United States realized that there wasn't a majority religion there because there were many Christian denominations represented in America. And they knew from their history how religions who have political power can persecute people. And that is a bad thing. And they wanted to make sure that could not happen. So they decided to create a secular nation where freedom of religion was guaranteed for everybody. And they put that in the First Amendment of the Constitution. And consider how Sharia law makes things difficult in Muslim countries today. People are being murdered and executed in the name of Islam, and women are being repressed by Muslim men. It is only when church and state are kept separate that each can serve us best. Government can best protect our rights when it's free of any church, and religion can best minister to the spiritual needs of people when people come to it voluntarily and are under no coercion from it.